Don't let the name fool you. Slab City is not actually a city. That's kind of the point. This unincorporated California community, located in the desert about 190 miles southeast of Los Angeles, appeals to people who want to live on the fringes of traditional society. But what is life actually like when you're hanging out in the blazing heat, with no power or running water, miles away from any signs of civilization? Today, we're going to explore the daily realities of living in Slab City. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Channel and leave us a comment letting us know what other unusual cities you would like to hear about next. Just in case it wasn't already clear, life is not easy in Slab City. That's because the area upon which the makeshift community exists wasn't designed as a place for people to live. It's built on the remains of a World War II era Marine Corps training camp, Camp Dunlap which was shut down in 1961. The name Slab City refers to the concrete slabs that remained on the site after the base was disbanded, comfy. Geographically speaking, the community is located within a sedimentary basin known as the Salton Trough, most famous for the shallow, landlocked, highly salinated body of water known as the Salton Sea. However, thanks to some resourceful residents, there are a few amenities to be found in the area. One tent features a wireless router and serves as a de facto internet cafe, giving locals limited access to the outside world. There's also a pirate slab city radio station, a church, and a library featuring a selection of not just books, but DVDs, magazines, and video games. A drained swimming pool serves as a makeshift skate park, and there's even a P.O. box that can receive packages from UPS, FedEx, and Amazon. There's no post office though, the federal mail system still doesn't recognize Slab City formally. These projects not only provide important services for the locals, but can also help stave off boredom, which is a pretty big problem when you live off the grid in the middle of the desert. They don't exactly have a football team. While some people clearly move to the Slab for a peace and quiet, there's really not much to do and nowhere really to go. Once you've read all those magazines in the library, Better just start over again from the beginning and just pretend to be surprised by people's sexiest man alive issue. The closest recognizably civilized town is Nyland, California, which is walkable in a pinch, but significantly less sweaty if you have a ride. The town has two stores, Soco and Mize, providing access to basic fundamentals like gas, cigarettes, beer, and snacks. But if you can press on another 35 miles or so to the larger town of El Centro, They've got a Walmart and a Costco, where you can bulk buy tons of items to keep you sustained in the slab. Plus, they have those $1.50 hot dogs. These kinds of supplies are vital for slabbers because the trough is not a friendly environment in which to grow your own food. A few slabbers have managed to raise chickens on their plot, providing fresh access to eggs, but most fresh produce has to be brought in. With a near complete lack of infrastructure and social services, making a life here requires some amount of sacrifice and a lot of determination and planning. First and foremost, Slab City seems to appeal to unconventional types, mavericks who feel penned in by the demands and expectations of daily life in a big city and want to live life on their own terms, which is understandable. How many have thought about moving off the grid after getting that millionth AOL disc in the mail? Some also come to Slab City to lay low. As photographer Donathan Wiley, who has worked on projects on the Slab, once said, there are clearly people there who don't want to be found. Despite their different reasons for being there, the Slabbers have formed a genuine community. An open stage venue in the middle of the city known as The Range provides a performance space, and any local artist or band is welcome to get on up there and showcase their work. The range is also the site of Slab City's annual prom party, marking the end of the winter season, before the weather heats up and drives most of the residents out to other areas. And that's not just a cute name. Locals apparently do take the opportunity to dress up and treat it like a real prom, although presumably with less tearful breakups and trips to raid your parents' liquor cabinet. That said, experienced slabbers do recommend that new arrivals plan to live entirely self-sufficiently at first and to give the community time to gradually accept you. It's not all makeshift libraries and DIY proms, though. The slab has become a destination for hard partying. It's a popular place to go and do drugs and has become a haven for drug and alcohol abuse. Oh, I guess it really is like the prom. 
This has led to some tension between long-term residents who prefer the slab as a low-cost and libertarian option versus newer arrivals who see it as a place to get wild and unhinged. Still, visitors and former residents generally describe slabbers as friendly and inviting and proud of their little self-sustained community. Living on the slab is also a good way to cut down on your personal spending. Slab City isn't formally incorporated as a town in the state of California, so setting up a little makeshift home for yourself there can save money on both rent and property taxes, provided you're willing to live in the sandblasted ruins of an old military installation. Many slabbers live entirely on government assistance or fixed incomes. One resident claimed to survive on food stamps and five to six dollars per month, so it makes sense that they moved out of Los Angeles. You can spend that on parking in about 45 minutes. This has made life on the slab particularly appealing to so-called snowbirds, senior citizens who move there during the winter months to escape cold weather in their regular homes. Apparently, they got tired of Florida. These retirees often park their RVs on the same plots year after year, and then arrange to swap their spots with locals who are remaining on site during the summer. Sort of like musical chairs. In general, the money you bring to Slab City is the money you'll be living off of for the duration of your stay because there isn't much in the way of steady employment in the area. A lot of locals avoid using currency at all and instead operate on the barter system. Wait a minute. Oh, well, we're supposed to haggle. No, no, I've got to get... What do you mean, no, no, no? I haven't got time. Well, I've give got... it back then. However, because the slab does attract a reasonable amount of tourists, there's still some cash money to be made from selling souvenirs and artwork to visitors. A few particularly hardy and bold individuals will apparently also collect shell casings from the nearby firing range to sell as scrap metal. And when you live in the middle of the desert, pretty much everywhere outside of your RV is a firing range. Still, most slabbers trade work or specialized skills in exchange for resources. Even just having your own mode of transportation can be helpful for moving around goods, water, and neighbors. Though some residents have even more helpful specialized training including experience and training as doctors, lawyers, and veterinarians. Doctors and lawyers feel like a pretty big necessity out there. People with construction backgrounds are particularly sought after on the slab because residents are truly fending for themselves when it comes to shelter. Average temperatures hit over 100 degrees during peak summer months, which is enough to remind you why living on the grid was invented in the first place. But while the extreme temperatures do cause Slab City to empty out a bit, Many residents stick around, presumably to sunbleach their hair. Surviving those long, hot summers requires more than just a little bit of shade. Some locals obtain generators to power misting systems and swamp coolers when things get particularly unbearable. But the constant need to purchase fuel makes this a costly solution. Those generators do not run on sand. The heat isn't the only climate concern during the summer. Winds can reach 60 miles an hour and windstorms can last up to several days, which can really wreak havoc on a tent-based lifestyle. Sanitation is another key environmental concern. With no public services like trash removal and nothing even approaching a working sewage treatment system, everyone is truly on their own when it comes to cleaning up after themselves, which is another way of saying that garbage can begin to pile up quickly. Several visitors noted on Reddit their disappointment upon arriving at Slab City and recognizing that it's functionally a sandy pile of trash, covered in wrappings from prepackaged foods like chips and cup of noodles. One visitor compared it to a massive RV park during the off season, which was probably not meant in a friendly way. Clean water is another constant headache in desert life. As resources go, drinking water takes top priority but potable water for washing up also needs to be brought into the slab from the outside. This is because groundwater in the Salton Trough is full of salt and other contaminants, which you may have guessed from its name. It's not really helpful for keeping clean, though residents will sometimes enjoy a bracing cold shower anyway, just to cool off. There are local irrigation canals in the area, but locals are advised to avoid them due to dangerous and potentially fatal currents. Obviously, safety is a concern when you're living in a makeshift desert community with no cops or traffic lights. But most slabbers have described Slab City as relatively safe, even compared to more civilized neighborhoods that really do have cops on patrol. 
One former resident told LA Weekly that he considers Slab City safer than Los Angeles' infamous MacArthur Park, which is understandable. The MacArthur Park community is still reeling from the time an unknown assailant left the cake out in the rain. But that isn't to say there's no law at all in Slab City. It's located within Imperial County, California. And while the community has no dedicated police force, officers from neighboring towns pass through the area frequently, and county dispatchers take calls and send out units for disturbances and crime in the area. It's also not uncommon to see border patrol officers in the area, as Slab City is just 50 miles from the U.S.-Mexico border. But in general, slabbers prefer to handle things for themselves, justice-wise, and they live by some basic unspoken rules for conduct. As you might guess, these largely revolve around respecting other people's privacy and possessions, and minding your own ding-dang business. Some communities within the slab even take things a step further and grant longtime residents ownership over a specific plot of land that they can occupy with their campers. This means other slabbers, particularly newer arrivals, aren't allowed in that area at all. Other residents will actually kick them out if they're seen there, like the neighborhood bouncers. In terms of consequences for upsetting the peace or violating the rules, a frequent punishment is to have your personal belongings and campsite set aflame. It's a bit extreme, but so is life in Slab City. If you don't like it, you can always pack up and head back to Los Angeles. Just don't be expected to be invited to the prom. So what do you think? Would you ever want to live in Slab City? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our weird history.